Greetings, my brethren. I bless you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, and I thank you for listening to Words from the Word, and I trust that as you listen, you would get your Bible and follow along and see what I'm telling you, that it is all from the Word of God. We are looking at Because He Lives. Oh, what a wonderful thing to know that Jesus Christ is alive. Christianity would be of no use if Jesus Christ was not alive. But because he lived, I can face tomorrow. We looked at how Jesus spoke to his disciples and he told them the words that he spoke. Those words were doubted and they were forgotten. The songwriter in the song entitled The Old Rugged Cross, he said, To the old rugged cross I will ever be true with shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. So I cherish the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down, I will cling to the old rugged cross and someday I'll exchange it for a crown. What a beautiful song. We closed last morning on the words he spoke were doubted and forgotten. I shared with you how his enemies were the ones that remember what he said about his resurrection. I shared with you that the women did not remember. I shared with you that Mary Magdalene did not remember. I shared with you that Peter and John did not remember. But let me share with you that the apostles did not. In Luke chapter number 24, verse number 7, down to verse number 11, the Bible said, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again, and they remember his words, and return from the sepulcher, and told all these things unto the eleven and to the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Look at verse 11. And their words seems to them as idle tales, and they believe them not. It is amazing how many times Jesus sat down and spoke to his disciples, and no doubt some of them said amen. And yet, when it all came to pass, they did not believe him. He had two disciples that were traveling on Emmaus Road. They did not remember. If you read from Luke chapter number 24, verse number 13, all the way down to about verse number 31, the Bible said, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three go follow. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. And their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that ye have one towards another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleophas answering and said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days. He said unto them one thing, and they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mightier in deed and word before God and in all people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be crucified to death and have crucified him. But we trust that it had been he who should redeem Israel. And besides all this today is the third day, since these things were done. And certain women, also of the company, made us astonished, which were only at the sepulcher. And when they found out his body, they came, saying that they had seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them that were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 
And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though that he would have gone further. But constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in, and he tarried with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. These two disciples, they didn't remember. Thomas did not remember. When you go to John chapter number 20 and verse number 24 to verse number 29. But Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, and the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto thee. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, thy hand, and thrust in my side, and be not faithless, but believe. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet believe. That was true about his disciples, and it is so true of many today. They took it as if his death was final. They were not looking to see him in person again. He also said he will go to heaven and he will prepare a place and he'll come again and he'll receive us unto himself in John chapter number 14 and verse number 3. The thing is, many people today are living just as if he's not going to come back. No different to the disciples. No different to those that did not remember. No different to those that did not believe. We're just living our lives as if Jesus Christ is gone. He's done with. He's not coming back again. But my friend, I tell you, it won't be long before Jesus Christ returns. So let me close by saying the importance of his resurrection. Why was his resurrection important? Let's go back to our text. We restarted in our first devotion. And of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me read for you from verse number 12 down to verse number 19. Chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to share with you the importance of the resurrection in the few seconds that I have remaining. He said, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and ye have found false witnesses of God, because ye have testified of God that he raised of Christ, whom he raised not of, if so be, that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and ye are yet in your sin. And they also which have fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. We are of all men most miserable. The resurrection of Christ is the constitution. It is the bill of rights and the declaration of the independence of the Christian faith. The sign of Christianity is not really the cross as important as the cross may be. The sign of Christianity is the empty tomb. If there is no resurrection, then we all need to close shop and join the rest of the world. If one denies the resurrection, he's forced to accept six or seven terrible conclusions the enemies of the gospel, they deny the, the resurrection. If there is no resurrection, in regards to Christ, the Easter story is nothing more 
than a lie. We know that it is not a lie because we believe the word of God. We believe the empty tomb. We believe the eyewitnesses. We believe Mary Magdalene. We believe the women. We believe Peter, the denier of Christ. We believe the two disciples on Emmaus Road. We believe the 10 disciples at once in John chapter 20. One week after, he appeared to the 11 of the disciples. The seven disciples by the Sea of Galilee, we believe them. At this time, he had to speak out to Peter. We believe the 500 brethren who saw him at once in 1 Corinthians 15, 6. It was James, his own brother, who found it hard to be a believer, but he appeared to him in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7. Prior to the resurrection, James seems not to believe him. Immediately after the resurrection, he was numbered among them in Acts chapter number 1, verse number 14, and Galatians chapter number 1 and verse number 19. James became a believer and an outstanding member in the church of God. We believe Stephen in Acts chapter number 7, verse 55 to verse number 56. We believe Paul on the Damascus Road in Acts chapter number 9, verse 3 to 6, chapter 22, verse 6 to 11, and chapter 26, verse 13 to 18. We believe the Apostle John in Revelation chapter number 1, verse 12 to 20. In regards to the gospel preaching, it would be useless, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 14, if Christ is not raised. We know that is not true because of Romans 1, 16, where Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew force and also to the Greek. We know it is the gospel that we heard. In regards to all gospel preachers, we'll be nothing more than liars if Christ is not written. And regard to all believers, according to chapter 15, and verse number four, he said, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. But each and every one of us can testify to the fact he's alive. He's alive. Jesus Christ is alive. And because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Thank God that Jesus Christ is alive. Father, we thank you so much for sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the cross to die for our sins. And now, Lord, as we continue to live for you, may your will be done in our lives. Bless your people. Bless these devotions. Bless every partner that help us to get these devotions across the world. Save people by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless all of you. Enjoy the season. Greetings. Have a great day. Don't forget, share.